Have you ever had an assault on your senses? Well, today we're talking about assault for your senses. Salt is a really important thing in our diet in the sense of nothing happens within the cells of our body without the presence of salt. But the thing is, is we don't actually need added salt. There's plenty of salt in the vegetation that we eat that sustains us. But what we have acclimated to is to have the taste of salt in foods. And it is one of those things that's absolutely delicious, can enhance the flavors of food. There's the other side of it that's quite addictive. I want to talk to you about the problem of salt in our diet. Do you know that 70% of our salt consumption actually comes from processed foods? And it also comes from salts that are highly processed. So they have a different impact on our body than natural salts. So I want to take you through the different salts that um, are typically used and some ones that alternatives that you can go to. Now, understand there are thousands of types of salt. If you're looking for different salts, there's different qualities, there's different flavors, there's different parts of the world they're from. So I'm using some commonly obtained salts. Now, starting out, this is what I grew up with, table salt. And most of you, I'm sure, know about table salt. It is a highly refined product. So there's naturally occurring in any sea salt or rock salt, there's up to 84 minerals naturally occurring in the salt. These are great for our body to have. Now in nature, it stops us from having too much salt by something being too salty. And you can build up a tolerance and a threshold, but by and large, when something has too much salt in it, our palates actually reject it. The problem is with highly refined salts is that you can actually process the salt to the point where it has tons of sodium in it, but it doesn't even taste salty. It's like glucose that you can get that will totally spike your blood sugar, but doesn't even taste sweet. It's that processed. So what happens when we have pure salt or you know sodium chloride just on its own, it reacts differently in the body because it doesn't have all these other minerals to, to work with it, right? It's just like the pure white substance, like pure refined sugar. It reacts like a drug in the body and it's problematic and we can actually build a higher threshold for consuming more because it doesn't actually dissolve as well. So if you have a normal table salt, and you're using it in cooking versus a sea salt or a rock salt ground to the same size, this will not break down as well. And sometimes what they'll do is they'll add up to six different additives to the salt to bulk it up, to make it cheap. They'll cook it at super high temperatures, like 600 degrees Fahrenheit, bind it together, and then break it up. And that's why if you taste table salt on its own, it has this bitter, acrid aftertaste. In fact, Andy tried it, and he said, that's horrible. Oh, that's my terrible English accent. But he basically said it was horrible with a beautiful English accent, um, not my terrible one. Um, he tasted, he's like, it's like night and day compa compared to the natural sea salt. Now, you can get sea salts um, that are still processed. So you want to look for something that is unrefined and naturally occurring and from good, clean water because now it's happening. As our oceans become more polluted, it's harder to find sources of sea salt that haven't been impacted by you know, petroleum in the ocean and chemicals that, that are in our oceans, which is one of the reasons why people are moving and drawn more towards rock salt. So rock salt, and what's particularly uh, famous right now, or you know, well-known and trending, is the Himalayan rock salt. Not Himalayan sea salt. It hasn't been a sea for a very long time, just so you know, okay? <laughs> Often people say, I've got Himalayan sea salt. Ooh, that's interesting. Didn't know there was an ocean next to the Himalayas. Anyway, sorry, I digress. One of the things you want to find out is that there are different qualities and grades of Himalayan salt. So big thing right now is we're starting to see that some uh, Himalayan salts have mercury in it. Why would there be mercury in it? Well, there's a hand-picking way that you can actually get your rock salt out of the mine, hand-produced, that has no chemicals in it. What they do for cheaper extraction is they'll actually use explosives. So now you have rock salt that has explosive residues on it. It's cheaper, easier you know, to kind of find and, and pay for, but there's a cost with it. So you really want to find hand-harvested Himalayan salt, not the cheap stuff, you know, and you'll find it in big containers for, uh, you know, a, a really inexpensive price, but remember there's going to be a cost to it and it can impact your health. 
There's things like natural sea salts, which have just been used with salt beds. So this one's very popular among chefs, but there's lots of different varieties of sea salts that are being procured. What I encourage you to do is to do a little tasting. Take your table salt, find your, your natural versions of the salt, and do a tasting. As I said, our bodies require salt to live, but we don't require added salt to live. Now the whole thing with iodine and salt, again, you want to get your iodine from natural food sources. So a little bit of seaweed you know, in your diet, a little bit of kombu in a soup, even if you're not even eating the, the seaweed, if it kind of you're not used to it, freaks you out, just take your kombu out at the end and it will have natural nice levels of iodine in it. You don't actually need it from your salt and chances of it being a good natural version of iodine, not so much. So what I'd love you to do is to take your table salt out of the cupboard or find some and taste it and then maybe get some sea salts, get a cheaper version, a more expensive version if you can, and a, maybe even a hand harvested Himalayan salt. Do a tasting yourself and I'd love to know and hear from you as to your experience in trying this and the difference in the variations between the salts you're trying. As you know, Sweet Freedom is all about being informed with the right information and taking that information and then testing it as to how it feels and how you experience it in your body. Because when you have stuff that is actually good for your body and good for the planet, it is the ultimate road to sweet freedom.